Hey everybody, I am back with this week's creative pep talk and I am going to build on what we talked about last week because last week was all about asking and I recorded that message in the full knowledge that asking isn't easy. Asking takes courage and that's what I want to talk about this week because I feel like courage is such an underrated and sometimes even just completely ignored part of the creative process, which is crazy because doing something creative innately, inherently requires courage. It's putting yourself out there in a way that you don't necessarily have to do in any other part of life. You know, it doesn't really take courage to do grocery shopping, right? I mean, in certain circumstances, it certainly can. But generally speaking, grocery shopping is just an easy thing that we do every you know week or so. It's like getting up in the morning. You just go do it. But boy, putting your soul down on a canvas or a piece of paper or a stage is another matter entirely. And if we don't acknowledge that creativity takes courage, then when we get blocked, we wonder why and we think that something's wrong with us. When the fact is, It takes guts and we deserve credit for having the guts to put ourselves out there and do the things that we love in the first place. No matter what we produce, we deserve credit for having the courage to do that. Now, I'd already decided after the last talk that I needed to explore courage more with you guys because, like I said, going up and asking people for things is not easy. It's worth it. But it's not easy, especially if you're not used to doing it. It takes time to get used to that kind of thing. So I knew that I wanted to talk about this some more. What I didn't know was that Stephen Colbert was going to give me a lot of inspiration for this talk because this morning on Twitter, I saw a clip from his conversation with Stephen Sondheim a few months ago. And in that conversation, He reads the blurb that he wrote for a Sondheim book. I can't remember if it was one that Sondheim himself wrote or if it was a collection of his work. And he talked about Sunday in the Park with George. Now, my experience with Sunday in the Park with George goes back to me being in high school. And I honestly don't remember if I encountered the show before I encountered Barbara Streisand's Broadway album or not. I think it must have been in that order. But either way, I stumbled on the show one night on PBS on American Playhouse, and I was completely transfixed by it. If you're not familiar with the show, the amazing Mandy Patinkin and Bernadette Peters star, Mandy Patinkin plays two parts because the two acts are in separate times. He plays the painter Georges Seurat and... Surratt's great-grandson, great-great-grandson, it's been a while, Bernadette Peters plays Surratt's lover, and then that that woman's great-granddaughter, something like that, several generations removed, who in the second act is young George's grandmother. Now, Colbert referred to the song Putting It Together, which opens the second act, if I correctly recall. And it's amazing to me how quickly these songs have come back to me, even though it's been a while since I have listened to the soundtrack or watched the show. And I realized through the course of my day that these songs actually, you know, I heard them, the show came out in 86 on PBS, so I would have been about 14 or 15, so pretty formative age, these songs really burned themselves into my consciousness. And Colbert points out that putting it together actually showed him that it was possible to do something artistic with his life. I didn't get quite that whole way there. But what I did get was lines from putting it together, like a vision's just a vision if it's only in your head. If no one gets to see it, it's as good as dead. It has to come to light. Or my personal favorite song from that show, Children in Art, has a beautiful line where Bernadette Peters sings, it's not so much do what you like as it is that you like what you do. And then Move On, which is the big almost finale number, has this great line that says where where the ghost of the grandmother's 
former incarnation from the first act comes and talks to young George. And she sings, stop worrying if your vision is true. Let others make that decision. They usually do. And you've probably heard me say something similar to that on this podcast for a while, if you've been listening, because it's a concept that has really stuck with me. Don't worry about your own work. Let other people do that for you. Just do the thing you, that you love that calls to you. And that's the fascinating thing to me about creativity and courage, because the things that we love to do pull us toward them. We want to do them because we love to do them. So the kind of courage that we need isn't the courage to actually do them. It's the courage to actually share them with others. And asking feeds into that because asking inherently is sharing them with others. You know, I, I mean, I went to the library this afternoon. I got the show out and I'm looking forward to watching it again. And I cannot deny, because I watched the clip of putting it together earlier, that I would love dearly to ask Mandy Patinkin to come talk to me on the podcast. And I might. It's a little bit more challenging than it would be at a convention, but I might. And, it, you know, it's, it's putting yourself out there. And it's okay. It's okay. And it's okay if someone says no. It's okay. Because like I said when we started... You still deserve credit for having the courage to ask. You always deserve credit for having the courage to do the thing that you love, even when you think that somebody else is not going to like it. It takes courage to be your real true self in a culture that wants you to fall for every Instagram influencer that has ever posted a photo. It takes courage to say, this is who I am. This is what I love. And this is what I want to do. It takes even more courage to share that with somebody else. So if you're not quite there yet, take it slow. That's okay. Give yourself permission to, you know, add 5% every week, maybe every month. It depends on you. There's no one right way or right speed at which to do any of these things. It's your way. It's your speed. It's your process. The more we try to take, turn ourselves into somebody that we're not, the more stuck we get because it doesn't resonate with who we are. So I want you to think about letting the love that you have for the things that you love to do fuel the courage that it takes to do them and put them out into the world. A vision is just a vision if it's only in your head. So... I hope that makes it seem like asking might be a little bit more feasible and makes you feel better about yourself for having the courage to do the things that you love because I know you're already doing them and you're already dreaming about them. And, you know, if you haven't actually made those dreams really yet, that's okay. You have time and it's, it's going to work out as long as you inch closer to it every day. You don't have to get there all at once. If you do, that's cool. But if you don't, it's all right. So be yourself, be true to who you are, have the courage to do that, even if it takes you a while to get there. And I would love to hear how it goes for you. So, and I will put clips to the Colbert interview and putting it together in the show notes for you. You'll also find in there a link to the creative tune-up, which is there to help you with a lot of this by reconnecting with the things that you love, how, why and how you love them, and also to give you processes to help you make that step to become a little bit more courageous every day, to move into that identity a little bit more every day. So that will be in there too for you to check out. Made it just for you if you're feeling stuck. So with that, thanks for listening, and I will see you next time.